Hi everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm here with the amazing James Tran, aka Jam Tuna. What's up, James? Um, and we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are streaming and creating from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. James, how have you been since Tuesday? Yeah, yeah, there's been a full moon lately, so I've been absolutely restless. Like I've been getting mad waves of creativity just come to me like late at midnight. So I I've been exhausted. <laughs> oh man. All right. So yeah, so the full moon's fully affecting you. What do you yes. what do you do? Do you like have to like you like lying in bed and you're like, oh, I just got a great idea for something and you write it down or do you do you do anything about it? Yeah, like my mind is constantly running around like these full moons and I always have like a diary next to me to sort of keep track down my ideas. A diary. I thought you said a diary next to me. Um <laughs> but yeah, diary <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So you write down little notes and uh, wake up in the morning and you're like, whoa, what was I on about? I don't, what, what was I talking about? Or is it, does it always make sense to you the next day? I'll, I'll just write whatever comes to my mind. Sometimes it's crazy. Usually it's normal sort of ideas, but I always like to keep a journal of everything that comes, like any inspirations that come to me at night and whatnot. That's cool. That Well, I know our friend Johanna in, in chat um, is a big fan of writing writing things down and um, writing things down by hand. Um, interested to hear in chat if that's your your flow. I have like nothing, not digital anymore. Like I've just gone fully digital with anything. But granted, I don't wake up in the middle of the night with crazy creative ideas. So, um, but yeah. Uh, so what's up, Johanna? Looking after us in chat. Megan is here. What's up? Um, how you doing, everybody? Um, the chat we're using today is at behance.net/live as always. So if you're watching over on YouTube and you want to come and say hi. Let us know how you're going. If you have any questions uh, for us, we're live for an hour. Jump over to be.net slash live and come say hello. It's always great to hear from you and uh, what you're tuning in for and uh, yeah, what you're up to and where you're from. Um, so let us know. So maybe we'll do a bit of a like verbal recap of what we did on Tuesday. So James makes these amazing cinemagraphs um, and we covered like, what's your title? Like motion designer, photographer, animator, Cinemagrapher, I don't even know if that's a word, um, but you do a lot, right? Like lo lots of mixed skills um, to create your artwork. Um, and yesterday, so I'm sorry, on Tuesday, um, we covered one approach to creating cinemagraphs, purely using After Effects, starting from a video. But today you're gonna show us some techniques on how you can create cinemagraphs from a, like a JPEG from a photo, right? Yeah, yeah. So. We're going to do like a neon sort of animations because neons is something everyone, any beginner photographer starts with sort of, they always go through a neon phase because it's sort of easy to get into and neon is very accessible if you live in the city. So it's, we're just going to start with neons today. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Should we jump over to your desktop? I think you're in Lightroom. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so this is cool. Lightroom Classic. We were chatting about this before. Um, I always ask people uh, why why Lightroom Classic over like the newer kind of Lightroom, and it's mostly because you have lots of like lots of photos, lots you know, it's all kind of stored, lots of albums. Is that right? Is that why you use Lightroom Classic? Yeah, so I use Lightroom Classic because if you shoot a lot of photos, it's easier to organize in Lightroom Classic. Whereas Lightroom, the, the normal Lightroom, the mobile Lightroom, it's, it's good for editing single images, and and it's good for editing like on your mobile when you're on the go and just like it's just and it's cloud based so it, it seems to be syncs but when you're shooting like big albums say for like a wedding or a photo shoot you'd want to use classic just for better organization yeah no that's that's cool and so what are we what are we looking at here this is like an album this is like a photo shoot from like a single day where were you who's this person what's going on so this is so this was at Adobe Max, like 2019. This is a friend I met. Her name is Caroline. 
Schelberg, I think. I'm not too sure how to pronounce the last name. Yeah. It's spelled as Kjellberg, K-J-E-L, but I'm pretty sure it's Schelberg. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were just walking around downtown LA and we saw this like mad, mad neon wall. We just decided to shoot in front of it because we don't really have this sort of wars in Sydney. Mm. And yeah. That's super cool. And where, where was this? You were in LA? What were you in LA for? So I was in LA for Adobe Max. Right. Thank you for Adobe Max. <laughs> and <laughs> we were just hanging out, having dinner with a whole bunch of other creatives. And this was, I'm, I'm not sure the exact location, but this was in downtown LA for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's super, that's super cool. And this is, so this person's another, oh, sorry, we said this, this is, this is um, Shelberg. So, um, so you just take turns like posing for each other. Is that why it's like super useful to like hang in packs when you're a photographer or a creative, you can just go, cool, your turn. That's my turn. Um, is that how it works? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Cool. All right. So should we have a look, just like look through some of these photos that you got? Has this been shortlisted or is this like all of them? So these have been shortlisted. Would you rather go through all of them? Or? No, no, no. It's cool. I'm just interested in like, because, you know, sometimes, we, you know, I'm thinking about uh, Benjamin Lee will come on here and he'll say when he does a shoot, he shoots like in burst mode and shoots like a thousand photos. Um, yeah. I'm interested in your approach. Do you try to, you know, shoot a, a small amount or do you also shoot lots? Do you shoot in burst mode? What's your approach? Yeah, so I'm a lot like Ben. I'd like to shoot a lot, which <laughs> I wouldn't say is the best practice, but again, it's it's you're caught in the flow and you shoot a lot. You don't overthink it, trying to affect every detail. And I'd rather just go with the flow when it comes to shooting and like bouncing off the, the energy of other people when it comes to shooting rather than try to control every single part, which kind of breaks the th flow of creativity when you try and control all the time. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more going with the flow sort of person yeah yeah well, that's cool um hey by the way we got confirmation um from johanna that um that pronunciation was excellent so um there we go good job okay <laughs> yeah. yeah these are just yeah okay so how should we start <laughs> just uh let's just have like a kind of a flick through this photo series so we can check it out so these are just shots took during the day So a question I get a lot is like, how do I pose my models? Yeah. I, I have a, so I'm kind of awkward and I like to throw like really, really awkward, awkward scenarios and visualizations for them to go through. So for this one, I remember telling her to embrace her like inner goddess. And usually <laughs> that that is such an absurd way to model people, but it breaks the ice of people. And, and that's how you get like a really genuine smile out of people and sort of create like a positive vibe around the shoot. Oh. So so after they try to channel the, the inner goddess, they're all, always like 99% crack a laugh like this. And this is what makes shooting, shooting, like shooting really fun, especially portraits. That's great. Yeah. It's like you tell someone to smile, you're going to get kind of that awkward smile. But if you make them laugh, you're going to get yeah. something like really natural. Yeah. And the more absurd you go with your descriptions and how you want them to pose, it's sort of the bigger the laugh. So I usually say, Pretend you're like a plant and your photo synthesizing. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> then, then they'll laugh afterwards. Nice. And yeah. But this one, I was telling her to channel her in a goddess. So you can sort of see her. Yeah. Sort of channeling that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we're going to just go with this image here. I'm choosing this image because it has the most the most neons we can work with and right. i guess it serves this tutorial better for me i personally prefer like these very emotional images instead but yeah it's a great it's shot yeah yeah so this and and you know because you're doing the cinematographs as well as photography do you are you trying to get that i asked this question on tuesday you're trying to get like a shot that you think will be a good composition specifically for creating a cinematograph as well as creating like an album like a bit of a series um yeah for photography yeah yeah like for yeah that's cool and all right and um and so you're shooting in raw yes yeah, so i always always shoot in raw always shoot in raw <laughs> yeah 
Right, so we're just going to start off with cropping this for, I'd say, Instagram specs, which is four by five. So just click the square. I'm just going to quickly run through Lightroom rather than go in detail because this is more of a cinematograph tutorial. Oh. So I need to just change the cropping to four by five. In the chat as well, um, I'll be asking lots of questions, but you, you let us know if you have any questions that you'd like to throw out to James while we're going through. So I don't like this bar rail here, so I'm just going to cut that out. I'm just going to go with that. So with neons, I don't tend to grade it too much because neons don't have like as much light data as say a sunlight. I don't know what the technical details is, but from observations, I realized that neons, the, the neon rays don't have the, the depth of sunlight. Right. So, so usually when you try to edit the image of a neon, you don't, it usually breaks really, really quickly. Whereas with sunlight, you can sort of push the colors a bit more. Mm. So I'll keep these edits to like a minimum. And shooting neon, like, would you prefer, would you have preferred to shoot the a neon, something neon at night or does it not really matter? Because how much you can edit in Lightroom. Uh, yeah, definitely shoot neons at night because that's because the neons pop more that way. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep this really simple. Kind of like this electric vibe here. So I can go into a whole lot of detail and grading, but that's not today's sort of topic we're covering. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to keep it like this, keep it simple. So export, I'm going to export to our folder. It's cool, We're chatting about notebooks and like coming up with ideas and stuff, Megan in chat. I keep a small notebook uh, to make sure I am more or less on task. Monday to do, Tuesday to do, etc. Yeah, that's pretty good. I had the, I've always had this terrible habit of like using a note keeping like app or making a list or something and then the list gets too big. Um, and then I just get rid of that and start a new one somewhere else. It's not very effective because then like important things are lost. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're just going to stick with this image and we're going to jump into After Effects again. <laughs> cool. Right. So new composition, we're going to go 1350 by 1080. And when we export our image, we want to keep it to the dimensions of of the compositions, because if you use a bigger image, it tends to lag because you're working with a lot more pixels. So when I exported this image, I used the exact same dimensions, which is 1350 by 1080. Yeah. So you use the exact same dimensions that your project file is going to be in After Effects. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna leave it 20 seconds. I'm gonna rename this name. So we're just so 20 import. seconds is my, did, did we do 10 seconds on Tuesday? Am I remembering that correctly? So we, I usually aim for 10 seconds. I keep the timeline 20, so you have leeway to go back and forth, but, ah. but we adjusted our in and out points to six seconds last time, I think. Right. So again, yeah. Ah. Just gonna import our image. I'm gonna drag it into the timeline. Oops, I realized the composition is bigger. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to move uh, move our like overlay camera not in the way of what James is showing us at the time. It's always hard with After Effects because jumping around lots of different tables. I'll do my best. Oops, After Effects. Um, let, let's do this again. <laughs> oh, okay. I should mention what? as well, this was at Adobe Max and obviously this was like a physical event um, mm -mm. but now obviously this year Adobe Max is online it's all up check it out you've probably heard us talk about it a couple of times here on Adobe Live and if you've caught some of the other streams a lot of the people streaming from Behance are doing their own sessions like 
Howard Pinsky, um, Paul Tranny, um, lots of people that you would probably know um, have their own sessions at Max, which is super cool. Been working on it for a really long time. Um, and uh, yeah, you should check it out and register. There's lots of stuff there. There's like 400 talks or something. It's pretty crazy this year. Um, but definitely go check that out. So for some reason my image is not 350, so I'm going to show you how else you can sort of resize it just in Photoshop. Nice. So just get an image. Oh no, lag. <laughs> <laughs> image. You get image size and you can just change it here. And save that ever. Easy. And you're just saving it as a JPEG? Yeah, well, I export it as a JPEG and I'm just simply right. resizing it. Cool. Drag that in. There it is. Background. So last stream, Ben has asked me tips on using the pen tool and I felt so bad giving like literally zero explanation. <laughs> so I thought it was like an in joke and you're just like, man, just figure it out. It was a pen tool, like it's the first thing you I've learned in Photoshop and it's sort of been intuitive ever since. And I thought everyone would know the pen tool, but then I realized how many DMs this thing I got. Like they, they laughed at my explanation, my really, really bad explanation for Ben's pen tool. So today we're going to do a masterclass on the pen tool. Nice. <laughs> Love it. So we created the background. We're going to duplicate the background again. It's control D to duplicate. I, I'm, using, I'm duplicating it just to make a backup. Okay, so we're just going to lock this so we have a backup. That's bad spelling. I'm going to start off with sort of using the pencil, we're going to tr essentially trace every single neon we want to be animated. So it's a lot of tracing going on. It's image. Cool. Using this pen tool. Yeah, so the pen tool is here. The shortcut is G. But for some reason, Photoshop, it's P and it's different. I, I don't know why. <laughs> pen tool. I know the I know the answer to that. Um, well, I know that I know the reason why it, everything's not the same. It's really interesting because um, something I asked a long time ago and I asked some of the like people who might know a little bit more uh, at Adobe about that sort of stuff. And it's interesting that um, there have been times in history where they've tried to change everything. So it's all, all the shortcuts are the same or, or for things that are similar, like the pen tool or something. Um, mm. But then you'll get one group of people who are like absolutely outraged. Um, so people who might just use Premiere or like just use After Effects are like, I don't want you to try to match it to Photoshop. I want you to keep it how it's always been, how my muscle yeah. memory is. And then by not doing it, people that use all of the apps are like, why isn't everything just the same? So I think it's kind of a, you can't really keep everybody happy. So the goal is to kind of keep the kind of, you know, the people that use it every single day is their bread and butter happy? I think that's uh, that's the explanation I was given anyway. I don't know, maybe they'll make it up. Yeah. All right, so with the pen tool, what we want to do is, is sort of follow the path. So it's a click and drag sort of scenario. Instead of just clicking, clicking, you're gonna click and drag and it creates a point between the two, like and it averages out the two points. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's a very mathematical formula, but the more you use it, the more intuitive it becomes. Mm. So every time you make a point, you want to sort of follow the direction that you're moving towards. Right. So say for this, we're, we're, we're going to move towards, we're going up, so we're going to pull it up. Right. And, yep. and you sort that of makes sense. So you want to drag the anchor point kind of in the direction that your next point is going to go to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a way of good explanation. I'm just going to follow this. So, so what we're basically doing is we're, we're tracing the, the neons and we're creating masks over our image and we're going to create multiple masks for like parts for every different part it's, you, you'll get it in the end <laughs> cool so this is one path and to create another path I'm just going to click off so control click will, control click would take you off this path and let you draw another path so that's what you do right at the end so when you're done control click yeah cool and again we're just following these paths Doing this. So with this tree animation, usually you want to follow like any sort of small bit of storytelling you can add to your image would, would make the image better. So since we're working with nature here, I'm just going to sort of, it's subtle, but like show how a tree would 
grow rather than have, just have the tree flicker on. So how a tree would naturally grow is you would have earth mm. to go up, and then the palm leaves would come out rather than just it all going, just flickering on and off like crazy. So, so we're gonna sort of build it that way. So back to this. That's cool. I like I like that a lot. Like, it's a it's neon, but it's a neon tree. So you're thinking, well, what would what would make sense to animate this rather than just flicking on and off? We're just gonna go up here. So when I started with pen tools, like most people, you know, start off like sketch, sketchy, and you usually do a lot, a lot of clicks, which I, which I think is totally fine. Like you're learning, and, and sort of how how I learned too. But once you use it more, it becomes more intuitive, and you you tend to use less nodes just for efficiency. So like this, someone might more likely use two points instead of one point or three points. Right. I usually try to use the least amount of points. Possible. Yeah, well, that's generally the best practice. Whoops. One of my one of the things I was actually good at at design school, which wasn't a lot, was using the pen tool. Um, and like a lot, of, like a lot of designers, like in design school, like sometimes. The, st the students will know like a little, not more than the teachers, but like a, tend to be a little bit better on the tools or, you know, you're a bit younger, yeah. you've got a bit more time to play around with stuff and figure it out. And yeah, my thing was the pen tool, was teaching other students how to, how to try to get perfect, perfect lines in Illustrator. Yeah. So to get this animating on, we're going to use an effect called stroke. So you have your effects panel here, you just look for stroke, generate stroke. Just gonna drag it onto the layer. It calls palm tree. So what stroke does is it, it creates sort of a brush stroke over the path we just drew. Mm. So you can't see it working now, but we want it to affect all the masks and stroke sequentially, and we want it to sort of reveal the image, which is how we're gonna be turning on the neon lights. So we want it to reveal the neon lights. So reveal original image can't see an effect yet because we haven't added any effect yet. So this is what's happening. And you want to make the brush size thicker so it can reveal the previous layer. Cool. So that's what we drew just then. And we want to animate it on. So to animate it on, we control the end, the start and end point. So you can sort of see what's happening if you go back and forth. Mm. So what we want to do is we want to draw it on, right? So. We're gonna start off with zero on the end point. I'd say we go in two seconds. We're gonna go 100%. So to see your keyframes, just click on the layer you want and press U. That will reveal the keyframe, keyframes that you're making. So you wanna duplicate it when it ends. Then we want it to sort of shrink down again. So we have a looping motion. So I'd say five seconds. Start up the first keyframe and duplicate it. So now when we play that back, it sort of comes on and off. Cool. And it looks like the lines follow like from where your first um, like anchor point is to your last, right? So if you know you want something to go left to right, you should draw the pen tool in that way or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So it will reveal the sequence that you drew your paths. Cool. And that's stroking sequentially. Nice. And um, what's up, Demis? Demis Rosalie in the chat says, hi, James, and uh, Denny's as well. Hello. Yo. <laughs> so when you play that back, you can't really see anything, right? That's because we're just revealing the image on top of the image, but we want it to glow and pop. So to make it glow and pop, we're going to use blending modes. So these so blending modes you can find here. We're going to be using these set of blending modes, which, like, which is like the screen, the add, the light in. So what these blending modes does is it takes the luminance value of the layer you're on and, and it adds it to the layer that's at the bottom. So every single pixel has a has a HSL value. H is usually who, and that's that determines the color. Saturation is sort of how, how saturated the pixel is. And there's a luminance value to every single image as well. Mm. So, 
so which is usually in Lightroom it's shown from like minus 100 to 100 so what we're doing is we're adding so we're adding the luminance value so this is a zero luminance value on red and we're just adding the top layer to uh, above the bottom layer in After Effects right so, so we're going to click add and we can sort of see the neon light coming on but again it's still very very stiff it doesn't glow like how a neon would so to do that we're gonna soften the the, the layer with a gaussian blur and that sort of creates the glow of the neon so we're gonna add a, add a gaussian blur here so gaussian blur. Double click. and then you just adjust the blur to see what you feel fits like a neon so, so for this one, I feel like 50 works. When you play that back, you can sort of see the neon yeah. coming on and off. And this is essentially just like the foundation of all neon animations. It's up mm. to you how much you want to stack the same effect across the whole neon. But this is this is fundamentally using the pen tool how you're going to create neons nice. or how to animate neons in your image. That's really cool. So with animation, you never really want your, your keyframes to sort of just be straight. You want to have an easing into it. So to do that, just press F9 and that'll just add like, add, add, add like a temporal, different temporal time movement to your keyframes. That's really poorly explained, <laughs> but, but it just looks more natural. So say like your arm, you never really really move your arm like that, like stiff. You sort of have an easing in and out when you go up and down. Right. So it's more like a flow. Very cool. So yeah, that's the tree. So now it gives I'm just it gonna... a bit more of a natural, like natural kind of flow pace to it. Yeah. 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 So now I'm just going to continue building up this image. I want these. So I want the, tr the palm leaves to sort of flicker on once it reaches its peak. Mm. So I'm going to duplicate this and we'll call this palm leaves so what and are you gonna... duplicating there are you duplicating the entire image again yes yeah, so i'm essentially just duplicating the image yeah the image so, so we're stacking the image on top of layer and we're taking we're using the add blending mode to sort of add the luminance value of the pixels to make the neons glow cool so, oops i'm just gonna make this green because leaves are green make this green as well. So we're going to draw around these palm leaves. Nice. And because it's like, you don't have to be super precious about it because you're going to blur it all. Yeah, blur it anyway. anyway. So it's just like kind of get it close in the middle. You're going to thicken the line up. Um, yeah. That's really cool. I always like it when people can, you know, you can do stuff like fast and pretty loose because you're going to add effects to it later. So it's not a big deal. You don't have to kind of get in there and be pixel perfect. Yep. Yep. So somebody you told me yesterday that when they use the pen tool, it sort of has its mind of its own. And I totally understand what they're talking about. <laughs> so, so if you can't really control the direction of the, the curve, you can press old and control the handle. And that way you can sort of manually choose which direction it goes in. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it the does pen have tool will guess, like try to guess where you're going to go a little bit. I think after you create like two points, after that it'll start thinking, are you doing trying to do like a, a curve? I don't know if that's like Sensei stuff or if that's just always been like that, but yeah, I know what they mean too. Around this time is... Oops. Johanna says, don't know about you chat, but this has to be my favorite blur who's with me. I can't name an other than oh, what, like radial blur. Gaussian blur is just the go-to, right? Yeah, for me, it's my go-to. Yeah. It's a good blur. So I'm going to add that stroke again. And all masks. So you can't see what's happening. You can use a shy layer here, just shy layer to sort oh, yeah. of... Actually, no. <laughs> Never mind. I'll take that back. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Is that the shy layer? Sorry. Why well, is it not working? Oh, oh yeah. You want to reveal the original image. Yeah. So the circle here will just solo the layer that you're on. So you can see what, what you're working on. Again, we want to thicken that. And we want it to animate on sort of like a, a flicker you'd a fluorescent flicker you'd see when you like flicker on a fluorescent light. Mm. So usually it doesn't just go on instantly. It's a flicker goes D -d 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 and buzzes on and off. So to do that, we want to make that sort of motion. So so what it is is just the opacity going zero to one hundred, then back to like twenty five, then to one hundred again, and then we're, we're essentially doing that, animating that here in the opacity mode. So you want to go in closer to your timeline. You can use this little mountain thing here. That'll sort of zoom in. So you have more leeway or more real estate to work in your timeline. Yeah, I was going to say real estate too. Yeah, that's really so cool. What? Demis is uh, all about the motion blur in chat. Interesting. Actually thinking about it and thinking about some of the streams we've done with, with Demis and some of his work, motion blur does make a lot of sense. It's a lot of like... <laughs> So we're just gonna create this motion. I'm just gonna play it back and see how that looks. So, yeah, so we're sort of mimicking the motion of like a fluorescent tube mm. lighting on. So I'm gonna unsell that. Again, we're gonna add our add spinning mode. We're gonna take the Gaussian, same Gaussian blur. We're gonna paste the blur onto the layer. Oh, that's so bright. And we're gonna adjust it so it comes on. It comes on when the tree comes on, when and the trunk is fully built. Right, so the trunk kind of animates up and then when it hits the, the, the palm leaves, you want it to flicker on. That's cool, so it's kind of like the energy or the electricity is like flowing up to it. Yeah, yeah. And then we just play back and see how it looks. Cool. So we want to sort of animate it off as well. So we're going to duplicate this last keyframe. And we're going to duplicate this first keyframe. So before it comes down. And yeah. That's that's how we do this. So that's two ways of how you can animate your neons. One's to flicker it on, and the other one's to draw it on. And then using this foundation, using this technique, you pretty much apply it to every other part of the image. Mm. So I'm just gonna do these waves here as well. Nice. We're gonna duplicate our backup. Was this, do you know, do you remember if this was like, an ad like is this out the front of a bar or something or like what i'm trying to figure out what it's for i can see or is it like an artwork piece or something yeah this was like an art installation in sort of a food market that uh, there's like a main food market in downtown la i'm not too sure what it's called but it's a very popular place yeah yeah i'm pretty sure it was an art installation oh cool um, we've got a question from chat from Alex. Have you ever used the wiggle expression? Yeah, I do. I use it all the time, <laughs> but not for, yeah, not really for neons, but for like hair movement or anything, just, just moving around subtly. Yeah, mm. It adds like a nice subtle movement. But yes, I have. So again, we're going to trace around these waves. Uh, Alex has uh, let us know where this is. So this is downtown LA, Grand Central Market. There we go. There you go. What's up, Elizabeth? Welcome to the chat. Uh, she says, loving the beach and neon. Makes me want to go outside. Just a reminder, if you've got any questions, let us know as we're going along. We need to send this to uh, 
Ichiban for the <laughs> for the masterclass. pen skill masterclass. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. I noticed that because this is a wave and it's kind of going up and then you want it to go back down, you're moving the um, the anchor point before you place the second one. Like yeah. kind of dragging it down there because um, you mentioned that it's it's useful to kind of show the pen tool where you where you plan to go next, I think. Yeah. That's cool. So usually when people say they have them, it has a mind of its own, they, they forget to press alt and they try to go to the next point, but it creates like that weird curvy. Yeah. So you can adjust your anchor point by pressing old and just controlling which direction you want to go. Nice. Jana says, might have to go outside and photosynthesize a bit today. Yeah, me too. I might need to get out. Um, Elizabeth, how is it on the other side of the globe? It's a good day here. It is a very nice day here. But what else you can do is to make it efficient, you can copy and paste the effects that the keyframes you already done onto another layer, mm. which keeps things efficient. Hopefully this works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, it, it'll animate on as well. So which keyframes are you copying? Are you copying the squiggly line keyframes onto the, the wave? light path that you just created so with the palm tree i just i just copied the effect stroke and the gaussian blur mm. control c and i just pasted it on and we'll also paste on the keyframes because then you can pretty much just trace around every other part of the image and copy and paste the keyframes to keep things efficient mm. but then i went but sometimes that keeps things like very very uniform and, and you want sort of a, a bit of turbulence especially in water so, so you're just going to move the keyframes around and adjust it. But it helps, helps in being efficient because you don't have to recreate the effect again and go click through all these effects and whatnot. Yeah, that's cool. So you want to kind of stagger the stagger the animation a little bit so everything doesn't just turn on. Whoops, sorry about that. Just hit my mic. I'm not used to it being over here. Yeah. So with these waves, you, you want it, I, I want it to come on and then come out rather than reverse back into itself. itself. Mm. So I'm just going to delete these keyframes. And to do that, we're going to go to the start point, 0%. And we're going to end it at 100%. So they sort of go out like a wave moving forward rather than moving forward and back. Mm. Again, you want to try and mimic nature whenever possible. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, and also also noticing, so we did it with the palm tree, like also kind of taking what the aesthetic of the image is actually meant to be, like waves, you're thinking about, yeah, well, waves will go along. They wouldn't go forward and back, but they might kind of flow like that. Yeah. It's cool. I want these to keep on flowing rather than have them all come on, then off, then start at zero. I want them, I want them to be constant flow. So. To do this, we're going to duplicate our layer. We're going to stagger it. Then, then now it's more like a constant flow. But but we also want it to loop. So similar to what I showed on Tuesday, we're going to cut the bottom layer in half. Okay, now we're going to push it forward. We're going to cut the beginning of the bottom layer. Gonna take it back to the top. I'm gonna push that layer to where it oh, push that layer to the timeline. So now that now it's constantly flowing. Rather than oh, come cool. on and off at the same time. Nice. It's mimicking ways. Let's just hide these and see how that looks. Yeah, that's really cool. Have we got a question from chat, Elizabeth? Um, what would you call a cinemagraph but for illustration slash animation? I just learned what a cinemagraph means, but I already love it. What do you reckon, call James? A GIF. Yeah, GIF? I was thinking that GIF? as well. I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of. I was thinking, yeah, maybe it's a maybe it's a GIF if it's, um, yeah, pure illustration. 
and it loops around and everything. I think we're probably talking about a GIF there. But it is interesting terminology like that. Like it's kind of subjective. Like at what point there's probably a breaking point between a cinemagraph and a, and a GIF. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure there is one. So we're gonna go around the skeleton dude. Again, I like to start with the eyes. Where, so I'm gonna start with the soul and the soul sort of brings life to the whole, yeah. whole character. Again, anytime you can add little bits of storytelling, it, it adds more like meaning to the image nice. rather than just a flicker on and I'm gonna start with this soul, the eyes. No, oh, actually, and I'm just gonna reveal this part. So it is a lot of tracing. Some people might find it tedious, but it's it's very satisfying at the end when you sort of it, it works and it flows. when you put on your favorite album or something or watch like a series you've watched a thousand times before and just kind of drift off and do that kind of thing yeah podcasts podcasts what are you listening to do you listen to anything particular i like true crime podcasts the sort mm. of <laughs> I, I just love listening to crime stories and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> I listen to, I used to listen to a lot of like creative and design podcasts and all that sort of stuff. And I feel like I got a bit burnt out. So now everything I listen to is like totally unrelated to anything else I do. It's more like escapism. What about you chat? I have like a thousand podcasts that I have queued up that I'm just never going to get to. That's my problem. Um, aren't cinemagraphs also GIFs or primarily looping video? Yeah, what what would you define as a cinemagraph, James? I think you've, it needs to have the illusion of a photo first. Mm. And that, that's sort of what separates it from, say, a GIF. So a photo is usually like, you think of a photo, you think of like a high quality image rather than say like a meme, which is usually low res, it's, it's funny. It, even though it loops, it's, it's like made to entertain. Whereas I find some graphs, they can be funny, but they're more, they're more like high end GIFs in my, my view of things. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> high end GIFs. Yeah. Again, yeah, so we've got that. And we're just copying and pasting the effect on again from our palm tree. Nice. And I'll let you know and chat know as well. We've got about 10 minutes to go. So if you've got any more questions to throw in, um, please do. Um, yeah, chat, I've been calling them animated illustrations because they're more on illustration with minor movement. Us because I wanted a shorter way to call it. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I think it's, I think it can be a bit subjective at some of that stuff. We've got 10 minutes. I think I've covered enough to show you sort of the foundation and how you can build your own neons. And yeah. <laughs> hmm. This is super cool. Delete this. I'm going to keep it six seconds. So again, making markers of how where, how long you want your composition to be. Control one, two, three. Got to create markers for you. Super cool. Hey, we got another question for you, James. Yeah. What's a cinemagraph idea that you really want to try out? Could be a concept, collaborator, location, etc. Um, I got a lot of <laughs> of ideas. I I want to work with like more animals or jellyfish or like. Yes, I don't know, lions. Awesome. Jellyfish. <laughs> lions would be cool. But like working with animals, it's going to be difficult, but it sort of adds like another element to it. Say like, you image. can direct them, just be like, just feel your inner goddess, <laughs> just to get that smile. That's cool. Jellyfish, man, I wasn't expecting that. Have you done any underwater photography and tried to turn it into a cinemagraph? 
I haven't, but it's sort of on my list. That's I really, on your list, really yeah. Wanna, like learn how to scuba dive so I can start doing like underwater stuff. Yeah. Super cool. Oh, stay tuned. I'll keep I'll keep an eye on your Instagram. I want to see that jellyfish cinemagraph. <laughs> I'm just going to do this one last one. I'm just going to do the old soul text. Nice. So this works with like any sort of neon text or whatever. Graffiti works. And you saw the examples I posted on Instagram. I can, can use it on tattoos and I sort of blow up mm. tattoos that way. Yeah, imagine telling a lion to channel their inner goddess. Why not? Huh? Yeah, imagine that would be quite hard, like if you went to like the zoo or something to get kind of, I don't know, the frame right, try to figure out how the composition would be to try to make a cinemagraph with with animals. Imagine the, the monkeys or the chimps or something would be quite good. Yeah. Swinging or something. I don't know. I don't know. You could probably get a sleepy line. Like if I think about the Tuesday, the Tuesday one, uh, the stream we showed on Tuesday, um, where the model was kind of lying and just opening and like blinking. I imagine you could probably get a line blinking at some point. And yeah, that's cool. This is it. So what I usually like to add on top of this is sort of, I like to mimic the, the lens flares you get in films and movies. I, mm. I personally use a plugin called Star Glow and that usually mimics like the glow you'd get from like a filter on your lens to sort of flare things out. Right. So, so the way I do this is sort of, I duplicate duplicate all the layers that you've made animations on. So, so just highlight on. And I'm going to make a pre-comp. So pre-comping, if you use Photoshop, sort of like putting everything into a folder. Right. Grouping everything to a folder. So to pre-comp, I press Control Shift C. It's going to call this lights. Make a pre -comp. So what? Let's look for star glow. Ah, cool. So it just applies it to everything in that pre comp or folder. If you think about it from a different app. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And again, it sort of adds. It adds a bit more depth to the glow. This is a bit too much. You can sort of pull it down. But add, adds a bit more flair. Yeah. And it's up to you how strong you want it to be. You can change the strength of it and whatnot. But yeah, this is what I usually add on top of my sort of neon animations. That's cool. And that's a plugin, what was it called? Star Glow? Yeah. Nice. So you can check that out. Big fan, big fan of big fan, big fan of uh, resources and, and plugins to like speed up your workflow. It's always good to like figure out maybe how to do it first, um, so you don't necessarily like so you know what's going on with the plugins. But always great to have something like that to speed up your workflow um, and um, add some cool effects. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's so. This is just like the foundation of how you can make your own. And I'm, I'm happy with this and happy to export it just for sake, the sake of time yeah again back to media encoder good old media encoder that's cool do you where how do you where how do you save everything what's your storage situation like like do you save everything locally or do you have like external hard drives what do you do so for me, I'm really bad. I, I do everything external, like internally. Right. I have like backups of external hard drives, but like I know 
other photographers they like to use NAS systems or network assisted storage. Yeah. I find that working on networks, if you're working on network storage, it tends to be slow. So I prefer to work internally because it, it just caches faster. Yeah. Your drive. Yeah. So same settings, uh, so same default settings as the last one. Oh, I don't know, this is gonna work. <laughs> While that's going, got a quick question from chat. Um, do you take inspiration from movies and its cinematography when you create these? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you're watching a movie and you're like, oh, that could make a really good like cinemagraph, like just this scene, or I wanna recreate something like this. Like all the time, like I'm a very visual person. So when I walk around, I'm constantly looking for like different compositions, different lighting scenarios, different shadows, and yeah. how I can like implement subtle movements in nature into my work, which will add, give it a bit more life. Mm. So movies are great, but like just even walking around nature, I'll just look at how leaves miss, how the leaves moves in, in the wind, how the mm. shadows move from cars and whatnot. And yeah. Oh, this is it. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Perfect loop. That's awesome. That's, great. That's been great, James. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I think we've only got a minute or two left, so we'll probably kind of wrap it up there. But can you let everybody know um, where to find you online? Is Instagram the best place to follow you and check out your work? Look out for the jellyfish and lion cinemagraphs that are coming soon. Yeah, so most people know me by Jam Tuna. So Jam Tuna Sandwiches, Jam Tuna. Yeah. If you Google it, I should be... <laughs> it should pop up my sort of links to what I've got. So but most people know me through Instagram. So Instagram.com slash Jam Tuna. At Jam Tuna. Well, that's, that's awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed um, these two streams. If you didn't catch... Tuesday and you want to check that stream out um, check that out on on YouTube or Behance um, and so in this version showed you how to create a cinemagraph from a, like static flat JPEG um, and on Tuesday we ran through um, you know coming at it from a filming perspective so shooting shooting a you know cinemagraph with a little bit of um, action happening in there to create um, cinemagraph that way so you kind of covered whichever way you want to go um, you could even take a photo on your iphone um, and then get in there and play around with some of these techniques so uh, thank you james it's been awesome hanging out with you i really appreciate it um, really love both streams um, and thank you chat for hanging out with us and asking us some great questions it's been awesome thanks for having me on and thanks for coming guys all right we'll see you all next time on adobe live we'll be back next week see you later